The year is 1839. Two friends, an American and an Englishman, depart from New York City on a mission to follow the rumors they'd been hearing about ancient stone cities buried under the thick Central American jungle. John Lloyd Stevens and Frederick Catterwood, an artist, set out to find the lost city of Copan. Their journey could be described as difficult, but that would be a major under, uh, understatement. Hacking through the rainforest in unbearable heat and humidity is one thing, but getting stuck in the thick mud, being kidnapped, it was only one day, but still, uh, and not to mention fighting off fever, snakes, and scorpions is another. The two explorers not only found Copan totally over overgrown and forgotten, they were amazed to find an advanced civilization with massive temples covered in strange carvings. After drawing as much of Copan as they were able to, keep in mind that the whole city was covered in trees and vines. The pair heard of another lost city called Palenque many miles away. Utterly exhausted, they make yet another long, grueling trek through the forest. Over the next few years, the explorers would go on to uncover, draw, and document the Mayan cities of Copan, Palenque, Exoma, and Chichen Itza. The books that they wrote sparked a major revival of interest in civilizations that many believed was a myth. The descendants of the once great Mayans and Aztecs now lived in small rural villages in Central America, just seeking out a living as subsistence farmers in mud huts. Their religion and language was long forgotten after being made a crime by the Spanish who came and conquered the area in the 1500s. Archaeologists raced to clear the jungle and learn as much as they could about these once great civilizations who built stone pyramids and massive cities out of the rainforest. On the outer fringes of the city lived the commoners, who lived in mud and grass reed huts and did all of the grunt work like farming and helping to build public works projects. The Mayan commoners were near the bottom of the Mayan social ladder, just above the slaves. The Mayans had been farming all the way since around 5000 BC, when evidence suggests that the Mesoamericans began to give up farming in favor of a more sedentary lifestyle. The Mayans were excellent farmers and they were able to use their knowledge of the natural, natural world to domesticate plants and animals such as the wild turkey. The men were also responsible for bringing home the venison by hunting deer and other wild game. This spike in food production allowed the population to grow and over a few hundred years their villages began to grow into towns and cities. Things were looking up for the Mayans, but slash and burn farming is a very wasteful method of growing food. The land wears out fast and the constant rain erodes the uh, topsoil. In order to create cities that could support tens of thousands, the Mayans had to move beyond simple farming methods and harness the power of science, which they borrowed and improved on of the methods of the Olmecs. The Mayans built cisterns to capture rainwater, built canals to irrigate fields, and drained swamps for an expanded civilization. In swampy lowlands, such as the Valley of Mexico, the Mesoamericans really came up with a stroke of farming genius in the form of chinampas. Chinampas are floating gardens built on a reed platform and piled with mud. It was using this system that one of the greatest Mesoamerican cities, the Aztec capital Tenochtitlan, was able to feed one million hungry faces every day. If you follow the link on Edmodo uh, in regards to build your own chinampa, you can actually learn how to do this and their technique uh, for yourself. The great mass of people in the Mayan world were commoners who lived in simple mud huts on the outskirts of town. The people lived as peasant farmers working the fields and chinampas for most of the year to ensure that the kingdom had a sufficient food supply. For the peasant family, your life revolved around the season, which in the tropical environment of Central America meant a dry season and a wet season. During the dry season, which started in the late fall, farmers would be out in groups getting the land ready for spring planting. Growing crops depletes the nutrients in the soil. To keep the soil from becoming infertile, they would rotate between fields. One field would be for legumes rich in nitrogen. Another field might be planted with corn or squash. The third field would be left fallow so that the soil could replenish itself. In this part of the world, the thick jungle is quick to reclaim anything that is left, uh, left so farmers would have to use slash and burn techniques to clear the soil. The ashes left over would help to fertilize the soil. 
In the spring, the farmers would wait for news from the high priest who were busy consulting their calendars and reading the signs of the gods. Once the farmers got the go-ahead, the far they would know it was good time to plant his crops. Farming is already hard work, but for people without large pack animals like an oxen or a horse, to pull the uh, plows, the Mayans had to find another way to get the fields plowed. Men strapped a small wooden plow to his forehead and walked his field, cutting furrows into the soil. For this reason, mine fields were very small, and the whole community came together to sow, weed, and to harvest the crop. The most important crop was corn, also known as maize, which made up about 80% of the diet of all Mayans. The old attaché that a woman's work is never done is as true for the Mayans as it was for peasant women everywhere. Not only did women have to help their husbands in the field, but they were also responsible for caring for the children, weaving cotton into colorful textile, and preparing food for the farm families. The hardest job by far for women was grinding the, grinding the hard kernels of corn into flour uh, that would be made into tortillas. Mayan women would be kept busy for several hours each day, hunched over their grinding stones. It was the woman's job to also get into the forest and gather valuable wild plants like vanilla, oregano, and papaya. Meat was not a part of the commoner's diet. But occasionally, men would hunt deer, taipar, or spider monkeys, which would be turned into some good eating. The Mayans had lived in the area of the Yucatan Peninsula, Guatemala, and Belize since about 2500 BC. Just like other Mesoamerican groups that we've read about, they started out in small agricultural villages. By around 5000 CE, about the same time of the last uh, Olmec cities uh, existed, the Mayans began to do a lot of building, which would continue for the next 600 years. Mayan cities were very impressive with all the trappings of civilization. They had advanced irrigation and farming techniques to allow a uh, large population to settle down and grow. Mayan cities were pretty happening places. Mayan cities were built on a grand scale, spread out over a vast area. Each city acted as its own independent country, we call that a city-state, with its own king and its own chief gods. The homes of the Mayans were grouped into neighbors, each with their own plaza, marketplace, and public gardens. Linking the neighborhoods to the city center were stone causeways that were raised platforms to avoid flooding, which is common in the lowlands of the rainforest. In the, city, in the city center could be found the grandest of the buildings. A grand plaza was one of the main features of every Mesoamerica city. The Aztecs, the Olmecs, the Mayans, all of them. Surrounding the plaza were the temples, the palaces, ball courts, and the largest of the city markets. To avoid the whole flooding issue, the temples and palaces were built on mounds of mud. To the Mesoamericans, Honoring the gods who, could, who would rain down all sorts of nasty punishments on humans if they weren't satisfied was their top priority. All Mesoamerican cities built temples that were meant to resemble mountains to the most important gods such as the sun god. Other temples dedicated to gods would be spread out throughout the city. The minor gods might even have to share a temple or settle for a simple shrine. Unlike in Egypt, the Mayans built pyramids that served the living rather than the dead. The Mayan pyramid temples were built of limestone and arranged in a step formation. Some of the largest temples, like the one in Tikal and Tenochtitlan, were over 200 feet high. Mayan temples were covered in carvings depicting scenes of their gods or of battles. The merchants and artisans were the ones that kept the Mayans supplied with both their bling and their daily necessities. Mayan territory was spread out from southern Mexico to Central America, an area of about 150,000 square miles, which is about the same size of the state of California today. Traveling across the Mayan Empire would have been nearly impossible had it not been for the ingenious network of roads that carved the path through the jungle, uh, the swamps, and the mountains, and it covered throughout the Mayan landscape. Mayan engineers built raised roads that were paved with stone and shot through the jungle straight as an arrow. Mayan merchants traversed these roads daily, carrying goods from one part of the empire to another. From the wet mountainsides of the Pacific coast came coca beans, 
High up in the mountains lived the Quetzal bird, whose green and iridescent feathers decorated the headdresses of the kings and the nobles. The Yucatan provided salt, and the northern deserts provided the razor-sharp obsidine that spewed from the volcanic mountains of Mexico. No Mayan city could produce everything it needed, so it was the work of the merchants who kept the markets well stocked. Before the Spanish came, the people of Central America had no pack animals to help ease their burden. Horses and mules were unknown to the Maya. To get their load of jade from point A to point B required a good old-fashioned human muscle. Merchants, or their hired quarters, carried the goods and backpack that strapped to their foreheads. This not only took the weight off of their backs, but freed their hands for other things. A porter could carry one of these packs weighing between 80 and 150 pounds for up to 10 hours each day. Traveling 20 miles or more with a load of valuables can be very risky business. Robbers and wild jaguars lurked in the thir thick jungles, and it was one of the risks that travelers took when hitting the open roads. To protect them, the government patrolled the main roads, but it was still a good idea for any merchant to travel in groups. The wealthiest merchants traveled in packs with hired guards and servants to carry their goods. The governor of every city built a traveler's hut where travelers could stop and rest for the night. Each hut was stocked with firewood, corn, and a few other creature comforts, all for free. On Edmodo, you will find a link uh, that is in regards to the Mayan pyramids. I would like for you to watch that as well. We will have a second part to this video that will be linked on Edmodo, on Edmodo as well, so be prepared for that one as well.